with the Sisters of St. Francis, brought a special guest with her, Marie Dennis, who is going to be getting a very special award this evening. Sister Jan, please fill us in on what is going to be taking place. Well, thank you for having us. Yes, the Sisters of St. Francis are presenting Marie Dennis with our Claire Award. We give this award to women who are nationally or internationally known who exemplify the characteristics of St. Clair and the values of the Sisters of St. Francis, including promoting peace and, and nonviolence, um, promoting justice, and right relationship with the earth. And that is this evening at 6.30 at Rastrelli's Tuscany Center and everyone is invited and we will have a reception for Marie following the service and she will be giving a very timely message for these tumultuous times so please come if you're free before we visit with Marie how did you happen upon making her this year's recipient well, we have uh, known her for a number of years. She was here in 2017 and gave us some information about nonviolence and she gave a public presentation. She is a initiator of the Catholic Nonviolence Initiative, which is trying to um, center gospel nonviolence in the Catholic Church. All right, very good. Marie, let's find out about you. First of all, congratulations. Thank so, you. Quite an honor. Were you shocked when you fir first heard this? I was, and I was delighted. <laughs> really, it's an honor. Let's find out a little bit about you, your background, and uh, how you ended up doing what you do. Again, thank you for inviting us this morning. It's nice to be here. I now am the, as uh, Sister Jan said, I'm the director of the Catholic Nonviolence Initiative, which is a project of Pax Christi International. Pax Christi is an international Catholic movement for peace that was started at the end of the Second World War to promote reconciliation and nonviolence beginning with the French and the Germans at the end of the Second World War. We now work on six continents and uh, have 120 member organizations around the world. The Catholic Nonviolence Initiative um, grew out of our organizational commitment to nonviolence, but about 15 years ago, we began to ask our members around the world to tell us stories of how nonviolence works for them. And from all over the world, we began to gather stories of communities that had successfully used nonviolent means to deal with sometimes extreme violence in places like Colombia or the southern Philippines or uh, South Sudan and so on. Um, we began to look more deeply at what do we mean by nonviolence? How does it work? So for the last 10 years or so, the Catholic Nonviolence Initiative has been promoting within the Catholic Church, but in cooperation with many other faith traditions and people um, who are not particularly motivated by faith, um, to understand nonviolence and to bring together experiences from very specific contexts where people have used nonviolence, sometimes because it was their only choice, or because it was something they believed in, or it was something that they believed would work, um, to, to I either interrupt violence or prevent violence, uh, sometimes to topple a dictator or, or change a government. Um, we've been bringing those stories together with researchers, people who have been showing that nonviolence works, um, using empirical studies to uh, uh, gather the data we need to know how it's used. So part of our message, part of my message now is to say that nonviolence works and we all need to learn how. What does it mean? How can we learn, and there are many online courses and local uh, courses in local communities that help us learn nonviolent communication, which we surely need in our society right now, or active bystander intervention. What do you do when you're in a crowd and there begins to be an uh, uh, unrest and a movement toward violence? How do you uh, calm that? How do you intervene? or um, nonviolent self-defense. How do we defend myself when I'm, if I'm threatened? 
uh, or nonviolent civilian based defense, which you saw happen in Ukraine uh, at a certain uh, to a certain point as the war began, but it wasn't prepared enough yet. Or um, to recognize the importance of dealing with trauma, for example, in order to avoid violence. So we believe that there are many, many directions in which the world, both people of faith and everyone else, can go to understand how nonviolence works and to put it into practice in the dozens of places around our communities and many more around the world where violence seems to be the only answer. One interesting example is a proposal for to send unarmed um, accompaniers, people who are unarmed but well trained in how to interrupt v potentially violent conflict to Gaza and to the West Bank as soon as there's a ceasefire and there is a project underway to make that happen. So it's a practical alternative to dealing with violence day after day after day. You were telling me before we went on air, you're in Washington, D.C. You're a very eloquent speaker. Mm -hmm. Do you do many speaking engagements, Marie? Quite a few, yeah, yeah. whenever I can. <laughs> and of course, people are going to have a great opportunity to come to the Tuscany this evening at 6.30. So basically, what you've said here, is that going to be pretty much the message for tonight? Pretty much so, in a, at a time when I think we are all feeling um, the heavy weight of the, the kind of horror that we saw a few weeks ago with an assassination attempt of a former president, but also the rhetoric in our country, our way of interacting with each other, with our neighbors, with our family members, we have to learn to do it in a, in a better way. We can have different, there will always be conflict, mm -hmm. but that conflict should not become violent and there are ways to avoid that. When you go out on your speaking engagements, are there like question and answer forms? I mean, do people ask you particular questions? Oh, of course. Yes, of course. I mean, a great one is, are you kidding? Sending unarmed people to accompany yeah. the violence or to try to interrupt the violence in Gaza? Is that possible? But what we know is that there are, oh, what, 60 organizations around the world working in 30 areas of serious violence, pr placing unarmed um, accompaniers people an, uh, being an unarmed presence in the middle of terrible violence and it works it doesn't always work it's not always safe it's a risky it's a risky job but um, we need to find other ways so there are let's work we're, we're my message is let's get started very interesting thank you so much for your time and again congratulations the Claire award presented by the sisters of St. Francis, and again, Sister Jan, extend an invitation to our listeners if they would like to attend this evening. Yes, everyone is welcome to come. You can, you got a little taste of some of the things that um, Marie Dennis is going to say, and also why we're giving her the award. It's 6.30 at the Tuscany Center at Ristrelli's. Thank you both. It was very educational. I appreciate you coming in today. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Let Gertis North End Auto Sales and Service put you in a new vehicle inspected and serviced right on site. 306 23rd Avenue North in the Lions neighborhood. Look over their selection of cars, SUVs, and trucks. It will put you in a vehicle that will fit your individual needs and budget. In addition, get your vehicle serviced at Gertis. General maintenance including oil changes, AC recharging, and they even have tires. The service department is open weekdays 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. Gertis North End Auto Sales and Service.